Okay, in this tutorial video, I am going to walk you through the basic process of using the pen tool to the best of your ability by doing just a couple of squiggles and curves in Adobe Illustrator. This is the real basics. We're just going to be drawing lines and curves. So first thing in Illustrator, I'm going to go to File and New. And right across the top, I want to click Print. Those are your typical page sizes. I'm going to start over here on the right, a tabloid sheet of paper, which technically is 11 by 17, but it doesn't say that right here. So you want to go to the far right and change the units of measurements from points down to inches. Now I truly know this is 11 inches wide, 17 inches tall. I want a vertical sheet of paper, not a horizontal. And I will click Create. And this is typically what an Illustrator file looks like. Just starts with a blank sheet of paper. Now when you come into Illustrator, I've already separated my Layers panel, but usually your Layers panel is stuck down here near the bottom. And you're going to be using Layers more than anything in Illustrator. So I always recommend you take your Layers panel tear that out and I usually just keep the bottom edge pulled down a little bit especially if I have a stack of layers that I'm going to be working with in Adobe Illustrator okay the other one that I want to pull out is the stroke panel right here so I'm going to pull that one out and you can see how small the stroke panel is and that is because it comes up as a collapsed panel so in the upper right corner, you're going to see a series of horizontal lines. Those are your pop-up menus. Every panel has a pop-up menu in the upper right. You're going to click that and say Show Options because the stroke panel has a lot of buttons here. Okay, and I'll just kind of tuck these kind of halfway over these other panels here just to kind of get them out of the way and I have a little more breathing room around my file. And obviously in Illustrator, I don't know what to draw. So what you have to do in Illustrator is set up your layers. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is file and place so you can trace. Adobe Illustrator is a tracing program. You know, otherwise I don't know what to draw here. So it acts like an artboard. And if you've ever had those beginning drawing classes, you tape down a photograph on your artboard, you lay a sheet of tracing paper over that and you trace over a photo. That is what Adobe Illustrator is. It's a tracing program. It's just a bad marketing thing to call it Adobe Tracer because then it sounds like you're cheating. But Adobe Illustrator is the fine art of tracing. Okay, so I have a blank layer right here. I go to File and Place so I can trace. Now I've already navigated out to my Chapter 3 folder right here, Chapter 3 Demos, Folder 3, Drawing Paths, and I have three scans. I'm going to click once on the first scan. This shows me a preview of what I'm about to place on the page. Now the issue is right down here, you have a set of options. If you don't see any check boxes, click the options bar. Typically link is going to be turned on and you do not want that so I recommend whenever you choose file and place so you can trace you're gonna check by clicking once on the scan check your options and turn off all check marks okay a link is a visual link to the file which means you'd have to save your illustrator file and your scan and a lot of people forget that they have to save their scan. So I turn this off. And what that does is a process called embedding your scan. Your scan becomes part of the Illustrator file, not a separate element from Illustrator. So it's really important. You check your options, turn off all the check marks. Now when I click place, it's going to show me a little preview of the graphic I want to place here. And you just click. Do not click and drag. Just click anywhere on the page. Click. My black arrow 
up here in the upper left of my toolbox is kind of like my move tool in Photoshop. So I can just drag this scan back up, kind of line it up with my page right there. And you'll notice that the scan is real dark and the scan is movable. Okay, you don't want to move that. It's like tracing a photo with tracing paper. If the photo moves under your tracing paper, you're kind of screwed. So you don't want this thing to move. You also want it to look like you are tracing. And Adobe Illustrator is really good at mimicking the visual appearance of tracing. So what you do is to the right of the name layer one in this blank space right here, you double click. That's going to bring up your layer options. Okay, and what I want to do to set up the look of tracing is click this button called template. Okay, it's got multiple functions. Number one, it locks down the layer automatically. Number two, it disables the print function. So only you as the user will see this scan. Your printer will not. So if I engage this as a template and I were to print this file, I would print a blank sheet of paper. Okay, only me, the user, can see this scan. What it does is it dims the image down to 50%. It's like laying a sheet of tracing paper on top. But I want to be able to see my tracing more clearly. So I'm going to dim this down to 30%. It's like laying two sheets of tracing paper on top of a photo. Now when I click OK, you can see how it looks a little more dull right there. And the main thing you want to keep in mind is once you make a template layer, Illustrator will lock it right here on your layers panel. So you do not unlock that. Your layer is done. Once a layer has been locked, it is done. You cannot draw on a locked layer. You'll get a pencil with a slash like this. No drawing here. Okay, so you have to come to the bottom of your layers panel, click the sheet of paper, and add a brand new layer. If you double click right on the name like that, you can type in a name for that layer. I'll just call it curves, and I hit return. Remember, if you double click a name, you can rename it. If you double click to the right, you have all these other options. And you'll notice this red box right here. That's that red bar. Layers can be drawn with any color anchor points. Okay, and you'll see that in a minute. But I'm just going to go with red anchor points here. So again, if you want to name a layer, double click the name. If you want to change other things about the layer, double click over here. Okay, what I also recommend is once you are on a brand new layer, you're going to hit D for default colors. That will set up a white fill on your toolbox near the bottom and a black stroke because we're going to be drawing black lines or black strokes. Okay, D for default. Now keep in mind, all we are going to be drawing is black lines. There's no white artwork here. So what I recommend is you click on the white fill once, so you can see it pop up to the top, and then you hit your question mark key on your keyboard. Your question mark key is, if you look down at it, your slash key. And a red slash means no fill. All we're going to be drawing is black lines. Okay. The other thing you need to keep in mind is D for default colors sets your stroke weight, the thickness of your lines, to a really thin one point line. One point would look like a little piece of hair on your page. It's really thin. We want to be able to see more clearly what we're doing, especially if this is your first time using Illustrator and the pen tool. So instead of one point strokes, I'm going to hit the up arrow and make it five points right there. Five point strokes. Thick, bolder lines so we can more clearly see what we're drawing. Okay, and I'm just going to tuck this off to the side here. We'll tuck that off. If you get a little confused with all the other panels, you've got a double arrowhead up there. Collapse to icons. So now I can get those kind of out of the way and push these panels over. So I don't have as many distractions. And what I'm going to do is take my zoom tool. I'll just click a couple of times, 
click, click, click. And if you zoom in and it doesn't land where you wanted it to land on your screen, you hold your space bar. That will activate your hand tool. So if you zoomed in and it landed over there like that, hold your space bar and you pull it back into view. Okay. So now I've zoomed in. I've got my layer ready to go. I set up a bolder, thicker five point stroke and I'm going to go to my pen tool. Okay. The first thing you got to watch out for is press and hold. You have a couple of different pen tools. You want to make sure you're on the top one. The other ones you can't draw with. There are other functional pen tools. You got to start with the one on the top, the pen tool. Okay, and the way you draw in Illustrator, there's just a couple of rules that you have to keep in mind. Number one, look at what you're going to draw before you draw it. Number two, look at the length of the curve before you draw it. And number three, look at the angle of the curve. Okay, so I know I have a pretty short curve here and the curve goes up and to the right. Let's say it goes up to the right at 30 degrees. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with my pen tool is press and hold and push my mouse up to the right at 30 degrees. Okay, notice how long I drag this line. I'm not dragging it way over there. I'm not dragging it over to there. I'm dragging it up at 30 degrees because my curve goes up at 30 degrees. The reason why I'm only dragging this far is the other rule is you want to click and drag about 30% the length of a curve. If I drag really short like this, it wouldn't work. If I drag really long like that, it wouldn't work. And I'll just show you. If I drag a line really long, I let go of my mouse and now I come to the end of the curve and I can see the curve is going down and to the right according to these red arrows. Press and hold, drag down and to the right and you can see that didn't trace it very well. So I'm going to hit delete twice. Delete, delete. And now I'll do the opposite. If my curve goes up and to the right, you do not want to click and drag down and to the right. Okay, you're following your little black triangle. That's where you're dragging. So if I drag down, let go of my mouse and come over to the end and drag down, it's gonna look like that. I didn't follow the angle of the curve. Delete, delete. If my curve goes up to the right, but I act stupidly and I drag up to the left, it's gonna do that it's not gonna follow the curve. You're really drawing with geometry. And I always use the adage, I passed geometry back in 10th grade high school, so I would never have to use it again. And of course, now I draw with geometry every single day. So it's all about lengths and angles, okay? So evaluate what you're gonna draw. I know this is a short curve. It's gonna tell me right there, I'm gonna have to drag short lines. I know my curve goes up to the right at 30 degrees, so I'm going to press and hold and drag up to the right at 30 degrees, about 30% the length of that curve. Every time you let go of the mouse, get away from that area. You're done dragging your mouse over here. You're going to put your mouse at the end of the curve. And again, evaluate what the end of the curve is doing. It's coming down and to the right. So you press and hold and pull your mouse down and to the right. And the whole idea here is as you are pulling your mouse down, look over here. Okay, look at what the curve is doing. You don't want to keep your eye down here because you're not drawing a line down here. You drag down here, but you keep your eye up here to see how dragging is bending your lines. Okay, and if I like that, that curve is still active. You can still see a dark anchor point. So that is the live, active, last anchor point that I drew. You have to be able to turn off a line. Otherwise, when you go over here, your line is going to keep on going. 
and it's going to keep on going and keep on going and going and going and going. Okay, it's just going to go endlessly. So obviously I've got a huge mess there. So I'm going to hit delete, delete. And then here's how you uh, deselect lines. So we'll practice with this curve again. From the start, it goes up to the right at 30 degrees. So I click and drag up to the right at 30 degrees, 30% the length of my curve. I let go of the mouse, put it at the end of the curve, and now it's going down to the right. So I press and hold, drag down to the right, and that bent the curve up here. When you are done drawing, like I said, you have to deselect this line. So the simplest way to do that is you hold your command key. That will activate your arrow. That's those arrows at the top of your toolbox. Hold command key or control key on a PC and click anywhere on the page. Command and click. Now the anchor points have been turned off. This line is done. I let go of the command key. And now my pen tool pops back up because that's the current tool I am on on the toolbox. And I'm ready to draw the next curve. So notice this curve is a little bit longer, which means I'm going to have to click and drag a little bit longer. This curve also goes up a little higher, let's say at 60 degrees. So I press and hold and push my mouse up to the right at 60 degrees. I let go of the mouse. Put it at the end of the curve and evaluate what is going on. The end of the curve is coming down and to the right. So right here at the end, I press and hold and pull my mouse down and to the right. But again, I'm not looking down here where I'm dragging. I'm looking back up here to see how it bent the curve. If I like that, hold command key, click anywhere on your screen to deselect the line. And you'll notice the next one is kind of hidden behind these panels. So again, you can hold your space bar for your hand tool and just pull the image back into view. Let go of the space bar and now my pen tool is still active. This line is even longer and it almost goes up at 90 degrees. Let's say that's 80 degrees. So I press and hold, push my mouse up to the right at 80 degrees. I let go of my mouse, follow it to the end of the curve, not the end of these little blue lines, because later on, when you're tracing a photo, you're not going to have these little blue hint lines to help you out. Okay, You're tracing the black line. So anytime I let go, I move to the end of the curve, evaluate what's happening. It's going down to the right, let's say at like a negative 80 degrees. Press and hold and pull my mouse down. But remember, you're looking up. Okay, you're looking up here at how you're bending that curve. If I like the results there, command click to deselect, let go of the command key. I can hold space bar to move the image. And now we have a really long curve, so you can see how long these direction lines are. But what I'm going to do is purposely draw this wrong, okay? Because I want to prove that Illustrator is really flexible. Even if you make a mistake, you don't delete your mistakes. You hold your command key and you correct them. So that's what we're going to do here, okay? Eventually, you're going to learn how to draw so you're not making those mistakes. But I want to prove the point that if you do make a mistake, it's no big deal. Okay, so right here, let's say the curve goes up and to the right, but I ridiculously drag over to the left. Then I come over here and I click and drag down. Totally off. I mean, nobody's going to make that big of a mistake, but just to prove the point, it doesn't matter. If you make mistakes, you hold your command key and that will activate your white arrow. Your white arrow in Illustrator, this white arrow up here, is your editing tool, your fix it tool. So if I hold the command key for my white arrow, I can take this little ball at the end of this, what's called a direction line. I don't want my curve to go in this direction. 
I take this ball and push it back up to the proper direction. This little anchor point right here wasn't drawn in the right place. So I hold my command key. There's my white arrow. Pull the anchor point back down where it should have been drawn. Hold my command key. Take this little ball, this direction point, and pull it back up to stretch the curve. Anytime you make a mistake, hold your command key because you are in command to fix your errors. Um, you just eventually won't be making ridiculous errors like that. So I hold command key, click outside. That line is done. If you're working here in a classroom situation or whatever, I would save your progress after you're done with each line. So I would just go to File, Save As, click on your desktop, and name that file. If you're doing it for a class, I would always type in your last name, your first name. That way you take ownership of this. Whose file is this? And then call it whatever you want. Last name, first name, curves. I'll click save. It's just going to be a straight Adobe Illustrator file. So I'll save it on my desktop. And your computer will always ask you, what version of Illustrator are you using? So if you started at school and you're going to finish at school, you just save it with whatever comes up. If you have an older version of Illustrator at home, you can save it as what's called a legacy file. Some of my students never upgraded, so they still have CS6 at home. You would have to save it as the older version. You'll just get a little warning error, but you just click OK anyway. It doesn't ruin your files. You just have to make sure you're saving with the proper version of Illustrator that you're using somewhere else. Okay, I'm working in class, so I'm just going to keep it Illustrator 2020, or you might have 2019, depending on the lab that you're at. Okay, but save your progress after each line. So I'm going to hold my space bar for my hand tool, push this page up so I come down to the next set of lines, and it says low and short direction lines make low curves. Okay, so if I click and drag a very low line here, come to the end, drag a low line, I'm not going to get much of a bend to that curve because it's low to the ground. Command click to deselect. If I drag a low direction line and an even greater space and I drag a low direction line, I'm going to get even less of a curve. Command click to deselect. Space bar activates my hand tool and you can see obviously what's happening here. If I drag a low direction line, low to the ground, and a really big gap, another low direction line, you see you don't get much of a bend compared to that bend you got way up there. Because I dragged way up high, which bends, and if you drag low, you don't get much of a bend. Okay, Command click to deselect, Command S to save another line of progress. Hold my space bar and we'll push this up. And I'm getting cut off with some of my panels. So if I want to zoom out once, I can hit Command and Minus. That will just step back. Space bar activates my hand tool. And you'll notice right here your direction lines. Direction lines is when you click and drag with the mouse. I'll just delete that. Direction lines will get longer and longer as the curves get longer. And that's totally true. Remember, you're dragging 30% the length of a curve. So if I look at the beginning and end right there, that is a very short curve. So 30% of that is going to be really short. If the curve goes up, I click and drag a short line going up. At the second point, if the curve is coming down to the right, press and hold. Drag down to the right. There's my first short curve. Every time you let go of the mouse, go forward to the next point. Notice as you're moving your mouse, I'm moving my mouse up 
and to the right to get to this point. So I press and hold and continue going up and to the right. So I can see it bend the curve right there. Every time I let go of the mouse, continue forward to the next point. And again, watch the movement of your mouse. My mouse is coming down and to the right to get to this point. Press and hold and continue down and to the right. As soon as I let go, move my mouse and now I'm moving it up and to the right to get to this point. Press and hold and continue up and to the right until I've bent that curve. Every time I let go of the mouse, continue forward. Now my mouse is coming down and to the right to get to this end. Press and hold and continue down and to the right until I see that I bent my curve above. Every time you're done, command click to deselect. Now I can hold my space bar and push this image up. And like the directions say, your direction lines, clicking and dragging with your mouse, that's a direction line. Your direction lines will be drawn at a higher angle as your curves get more bent or more pronounced. Like I said up here, low direction lines, you don't get much of a curve. High direction lines, you get a very pronounced bend to your line. Okay, so I'm going to go through this kind of quick. Right here, my curve goes up, so I click and drag up. Every time I let go, follow it down to the next point. I'm coming down and to the right, so I click and drag down. The next point goes back up, click and drag up. Your next point comes down, click and drag down. Your next point goes up, click and drag up. Your next point is coming down, click and drag down. Your next and final point goes back up, click and drag up. Every time you're done, hold command key and click, deselect the line, command S to save another line of progress. Hold your space bar and push it up to the final one. And this is the tricky one, but this is what you're going to be facing a lot in Adobe Illustrator. Not every curve is going to be exactly the same. Okay, you're going to have short curves that are going to be attached to long curves. And that requires you to take a step back and recreate new direction lines. So I kind of numbered the direction lines here. Okay, the first distance right here to here is a short curve. Click and drag a short line up. Come to the next point, drag a short line down. So I have just made the first short curve, but notice this direction line. I dragged a short line. Okay, what you need to keep in mind is by dragging this short line, I have finished the short curve but this is simultaneously starting the next curve. Okay, it's a dual function. I drag down to end the first curve, but this line is also there to start the next curve. And notice how short that is. But notice how long this curve is. And again, you're dragging 30% the length of a curve. This is more like 5% the length of that curve. Maybe 10% but it's too short. So if I come over here and drag, notice what it does. It doesn't even reach down here at all. So I'm gonna hit delete, delete, and walk you through this process. So again, my first curve is small. I go up a short distance. Now at the end of this hill, I come down a short distance. Two short direction lines for a short curve. But the next one is long. So this little short direction line here is not going to work for the next curve. So I have to back up to the end of the black line. Click and drag a new long direction line for this long curve right here. Now notice how long I had to drag that direction line for this long curve. 
but the next one is very, very short. Remember, you're dragging 30% the length of a curve. This is more like 300% for this next short curve. So I'm going to have to back up again to the end of the black line, press and hold to delete or get rid of that long direction line, and now start with another short direction line. Come to the end of the short curve, short line. But the next one is long, so I have to go to the end of the black line, press and hold, and now drag a new long direction line for this next long curve. Click and drag a long direction line for a long curve. And again, that is 300% the length of this short one, where we only wanted to drag up to here. Okay, I had to drag a long line for the previous long curve, but the next one is short. So you back up to the end of your black line, press and hold. Now I do a short direction line for this short little bump right there. The next one is really long, so I back up to the end of my black line again. Click and drag a long line to start a long curve. Up here, I drag a long line to end a long curve. Again, that is way too long for the next curve. So I back up to the end of my black line, press and hold and drag a short direction line up for a short curve and a short direction line down for a short curve. Every time you're done, command and click and if you have zoomed in for details and now you want to see the entire page, on your keyboard you can hit Command-0. That is the keyboard command for fit on screen. Okay, All we see are the black lines because I disabled the fill function by hitting my question mark key. And this is all we're going to do on this first page. So anytime I'm done, I just automatically go to my black arrow kind of like my move tool or selection tool and what you're gonna do especially for a classroom situation like what I'm teaching here is when you are done with your scan when you know you've traced it when you know you don't need it anymore you click on the bottom layer and you drag it down to the little trash can all I need to see is these beautiful curves that you have drawn that's it so if you find any little errors or bumps, you can always go to your white arrow, click on a problem area, and that will reactivate the direction lines for that section between that point and that point. If you found a problem right here, click and you would get the two direction lines for this curve. If you found a problem over here, notice how you get the two direction lines for that part of the curve. So you can always go back and fix things with your white arrow at a later time. Okay. Now that I have deleted the scan, I'm going to hit Command S one more time, and this file is done. It's ready to be turned in. So once I am done, I could just click the little X here in the upper left corner, and I'm ready to move on to the next file. So I'll do another video for the next scan.